We want to say a happy welcome to all of those who are joining us online this morning. Thank you so much for being able to be here with us. I understand as our world is a crazy time, as we're going through a crazy time and in crazy places, we are thankful that we have the opportunity for you to join us on that avenue, and we're so glad you have. Wanted to remind all of us here this morning about our giving. Don't forget, we got a keep on giving, giving back to the Lord what He's given for us. I thank the Lord that He's provided for us during this time. I'm talking about for you, and I'm talking about for me. God is been good, and we can thank Him for that. We live in a country of plenty, and we certainly ought to give God back uh, the part of what He's given to us and what He's required of us. So our boxes are back there at the back as well. We have the option to give online on our website, BeaconBaptistFamily.com. You can find that blue button up at the top says give now. Uh, remember, we're still trying to finish up the funds for the mics. We finally got up all of the mics. They're using our new mics this morning, and we're thankful for those. They sound great, don't they? Yeah. Glad for them. And so as we continue to finish up raising those funds, continue to give towards those, we need to finish up that 8700 we spent on them. And the Lord cut us a deal there. It was going to be ten grand, and we found them on sale right when we needed them. So we can praise the Lord for that. Um, God is good. Well, we're going to sing another song this morning, and it's one of my favorite songs, As the Deer. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after sing it to the Lord. I want you more than gold or silver. Only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my this morning. Buddy, come and preach to us a message from God's Word. Good morning, everyone. Did you come to worship the King of all kings? Is He the apple of your eye? Do you long for Him more than anything else or anyone else? There's a lot of choice words to that song. Matter of fact, some of those words we struggle in our life to really come through with him. He's supposed to be number one. I wish I could say to you today that he's always number one in my life. But too often in my life, you know what I find out? That I want to be number one. And that's true with most all of us that are sitting here today. If you would, if you turn your Bible to Acts, the 27th chapter. I love the Apostle Paul. You know, the Bible says that King David was a man after the Lord's heart. I believe Apostle Paul was as hard after the Lord's heart as 
King David ever was, or maybe the same. I don't know how you would describe it, but I believe he loved God. I believe Paul was just like each of us that are sitting here. Paul, King David, all of them had their stumbles in life. There were times in their lives when they were in great, great storms. And this scripture right here talks about a great storm. Matter of fact, if you'll study that chapter out, you'll find out that the storm they're talking about the ship being in here is sort of tied to something called a typhoon. Matter of fact, we find that it was a time that the ships were not even usually sailing during that time. Have you ever, any of you ever watched that, that uh, crab uh, boat show? I, uh, the, 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 I can't think of the name of it, where they go out in the North Sea and they, and, and they get crabs and all and everything. You know that each and every year there's more than one boat lost. There's m many lives that are lost over there because of the raging sea and the storms that they are in. You'll see in sometimes where they, I, I watched it for a while and, and, and when a storm's coming in, we're, I can't believe they're in the water to start off with. Matter of fact, one time I, I was going to go with Jackson Marine to the North Sea, and after seeing this program, they explained what it was like over there, but until you see it firsthand or until you see it on TV, you don't understand how raging the sea is over there. I am so glad. Somebody let this precious lady in, please. Thank you. I am so glad that I, 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 that I never followed through on going out in that job. I'm going to be honest with you. They've been there. You've been there. Yes. Praise the Lord, man. I'm glad I hadn't. I've been in enough storms in my life. How about you? Yeah. I don't want to be in a storm like that. But anyway, storm, adversity, whatever we want to call it, they come in all types of shapes. They came in all types of forms. They can be perplexing at times and predicaments that show up. And most of the time, they show up when we... Uh, probably most inconvenient to each and every one of us and they disturb our lives sometimes terribly bad you know adversity doesn't need an invitation it just sort of shows up from nowhere we, most of the time when we're least expecting it one moment life appears to be serene and everything's going great and all that kind of stuff and then all of a sudden next moment you know you're in the middle of a raging storm as the apostle was here you know, for some people, storms one after another, one after another, just it's a continual storm uh, in your life. I, I, I thought about this. I thought about people that wake up sometimes in the morning a storm, uh, especially during this time right here. The suicide rate has gone up. I was reading an article day before yesterday that talked about how some of these people that have money, that uh, have, li live in uh, lifestyles that are un even unknown to us, we don't even understand it to be that rich, but they've taken their own lives because of the storm that's in their life right now, because of where they're at in their walk, in their, in, in their life. And, and I thought about that a lot because I know people that at times they wake up in a storm, they go to work and they find work a storm. Hey, listen, when I pull up to the mission at 6.30 or 7 o'clock or 7.15 in the morning or 7.30 and I see somebody standing out there by where I park my truck each and every day, I know that I've got a storm that's fixing to start at the mission. And it happens more often than I care for it to be. But people wake up, they go to work, they're in a storm. Uh, they leave work and they come home and they're in a storm. Maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's a storm with a spouse or the children not doing right or, or, or just there's too many bills to pay for the amount of money that's coming in. There's all kind of storms in there. The diagnosis of a, of a great health problem brings a storm that's not only physically, but usually it ends up being an emotional storm and it, it ends up being a, a mental storm for that person. Some of us are going through great storms this morning. Even in the household of faith, even in the church of God, there are storms that come about. Some of you don't realize some of the storms that show up here in the house of God. But let me tell you, storms are everywhere if you're looking for one. It's too often in our life. Somebody, somebody sitting here right now today is caught up in the midst of a storm right now. And I'd like to say that when we're in that storm, we could be the ones that are singing, I will trust in the Lord. But most of us are singing a song that sounds like this, like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea when the storms of life are raging and their fury falls on me. 
A lot of times in the storm, it's hard to praise the Lord Jesus Christ for what's going on. But can I share something with you? This great news, this good news, the good news of the Word of God is that if you're a child of God today, you're anchored in the midst of adversity. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ is a solid foundation. And he's holding on to the end of the rope. And he never lets go of it if you're his child. Amen. If you look there in your Bible, I'm not going to read a bunch of verses this morning, but look in chapter 27 and verse 14. It says there, but not long after there arose against it a tempest of wind called Aerocrypton, and when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. You know what that means? They just sort of turned it loose. And they let the winds and the storm of that time direct exactly where they were going. We have to be careful in our lives because sometimes when the storm comes, we forget who has a hold of the rope and we begin to try to do things on our own and take care of the situation on our own. And you know something, when we do that, it's just like letting go of the oars or, or, or taking away from the motor or, or the navigation on the boat. We just sort of go the way that the storm is going because we forget who's in control. And there in verse 20 it says, And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, what are you saying? It said, It hadn't quietened down really at all there. It says, All hope that we should be saved was then taken away. Verse 29, Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for that day. May we go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father in heaven, I come before you today, Lord Jesus, once again. And you know, it doesn't matter how many times we come before you, you love to hear from us. And so, Lord Jesus, this morning, one more time, I come before you and I ask, Lord God, that you would use me today. And as I open my mouth, Lord Jesus, that it would be the words directly from heaven and not any thoughts I have or not anything I care to say. And, oh, Lord God of heaven, would you just give free reign to the Holy Spirit this morning? And would our, would our hearts be open to the preaching of your word, Lord Jesus? And, Father, for each of us that are sitting here, uh, we've been through those storms, Lord God. And you've carried us through. And, Father, there are some that may be sitting here today that's in the midst of the storm. And, Lord Jesus, would you just, uh, just grab a hold of them and let them see that you're on the other side of the storm and you've got a hold of the rope drawing them through it. And, Father, for that one or maybe two or how many it may be that are sitting here today and they've never grabbed a hold of the rope, they've never accepted you as their personal Lord and Savior, may this be the day, O Holy Spirit of God, that you draw them to the cross of Calvary. And they accept you for who you are and what you've done for us. And we ask these things in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. These verses in chapter 27, they actually sort of narrate uh, the storm that's here, that Paul is on his way to Rome. If you read this story, and I don't want to spend a lot of time going back on it, but, but he's going to be in a trial before, um, before Augustus Caesar. He's actually been before King Agrippa. And I want you to remember this, that, that as he spoke to King Agrippa, that, that he almost persuaded him, the king said to Festus. And so here he is, he's shared and, and he's talked about the Lord Jesus Christ. He's been the witness that God wants us to be to, just as he was that day. And, and he's told him about where he stands and why he talks the way that he does. Because the whole world needs to know Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And he decided to use us to get the word out. Amen. He didn't decide to do it any other way. He get, his, his plan is simple. It's very simple in the Word of God. And it's the simplest plan there is, but the problem is, is most of us don't want to carry the plan through. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes these storms come in our life because we don't want to follow the plan that the Lord Jesus Christ has for us in, in our lives. But the storm's there. Paul's on his way to that trial there, and they're sailing during a time when the route was normally closed. Paul admonished them there in verse 9 by saying, And now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed, 
Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and the ship, but also of our lives. Paul feared for the lives of those that were on that ship. Now, I know that Paul was sold out for the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I, I thought about this. Do you think Paul feared for his life at that time? I'm not sure the scripture's not exactly precise about that, but I wondered about this. And, and when I got sick with my heart condition and all, I, I can remember the pastor that I came to know Christ under. I can remember Brother Glenn when he came down with a cancer and, uh, and it didn't look good for him. There were only three places in the United States did the surgery that he needed. And, and he told me, he said, I don't believe God is through with me. He said, I'm going to get through with this because I believe he has more work for me to do. For him. You know, when I came down with my illness, I, I, I sort of held on to that. I think some people, including my wife, was a little bit more worried about it than I was. I think my children were more worried about it than it was. But I really, in my heart, I believe this right here, that the Lord was not through yet using me. Now, I could have been wrong. I, I, I could have fell dead at any time. But each and every one of us in a situation where our, our days are numbered. And for each one of us sitting here, it doesn't matter whether you already have an ailment or you, maybe you think that you're great and, and everything's good in life. Boom, we could be gone just like that. Sometimes it's in the midst of a storm, but often it's not. But I believe Paul didn't fear for his life, but I believe he feared for those others because they were on the way to take him as a prisoner to go before Augustus because of his stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, most of us will blame Satan for the adversity that comes into our lives. But can I say this? It's not usually Satan. The storms are there because we take a course that we know will lead to disaster in our own lives. Even though we know we shouldn't go this way, we'll decide on our own to go this way. Mom and dad told you not to do it, but you still went ahead and did it, didn't you? Think about it. Only to discover usually it hurt you. You know, I, this day and time we'll go and, 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 you know, my dad told me don't touch the, or my mom told me not to touch the oven, the stove, the top of the stove. And back then, you know, we had this big old burner. This day and time, you can't see whether they're hot enough, uh, hot or not. But back then, we had that big old burner. And still, as a little kid, sometimes we'd put our hand up there on it, and it would burn us. They didn't spank us for doing it. They just let us learn the hard way. I can remember I was talking with Terry uh, last night. And I, I can remember, boy, when I was in the fourth and fifth grade and sixth grade, and I know that people wouldn't let their kids do this, but the subdivision I lived in, that we were sort of down toward the end. There was one road that went back there, and there was one house, and you went past that uh, on the other side of the street, and for probably a mile or two that way and a mile or two each other way, it wasn't anything for woods. And we'd go out there in the fourth and fifth grade, and, and we would camp. Man, we'd build a fire, we'd have our sleeping bags and all that kind of stuff, and we'd just have a good time together. And I can remember one time my daddy saying, Son, y'all don't start a fire out there, it's too dry to have a fire. Well, here we go, we don't listen to mom and dad. Just like some of us don't listen to the Lord Jesus Christ as he speaks to us in his word, yeah. guess what we did? We started a campfire. And then the screaming and hollering began as we ran trying to get help because the woods were catching on fire. And my dad and a couple of neighbors came down there and they put out the fire because we didn't listen to mom and dad. And then dad, of course, put a fire on my rear end after that. But, um, and I can remember the words. He said, son, you don't play with fire because you'll get burned. And I thought about this. It's true. Get burned one way or the other. Either your body or maybe your butt, but you usually get burned. Paul is in the storm on a ship that says here is destined to be shipwrecked. It says there that they could not see the sun, nor could they see the stars for days. They had lost their ability to navigate that ship. 
during this time. They were lost. They had no idea where they were at, actually. If you'll read it and you'll read that whole chapter, you'll find out that they were wishing, they were hoping that they were close to an island somewhere, to land somewhere. When we don't follow God's word right here, when we don't, uh, you know, we're in danger of, we, we lose our navigation. Yeah. This is our navigation in life right here. This is a book that we're supposed to learn. This is a book that we're supposed to hide in our heart that we may not sin against Him. Yeah. But too often in our life, we're not even in the navigation book. We're not in the stars and the sun and the moon to be able to navigate our life the way that we should be able to navigate our lives. We become spiritually lost because we've lost our navigator, the Lord Jesus Christ. Not lost him as lost and dying and going to hell, but lost the ability to communicate, lost the ability to hear from him and be able to stay on the navigation path of life that he wants us on. It looked bad for Paul and these guards, the crew that was so caught up in their situation that they had given up hope of even living Sometimes the storms of life come into our lives, even as Christians today. And you know something? We give up hope because we don't see the end results that the Lord Jesus Christ has for us. I believe someone this morning is about to give up. They can't see through the storm. You ever been driving a car or a vehicle and all of a sudden the rain start, starts raining so hard that you can't even see the road in front of you? We get scared. Fear comes over us because we're scared of wrecking. We're scared of what will happen to us. And when you get out of this book right here, let me tell you this. It ought to just give you a fright of your life because you have no idea which way to go when the storms of life come up. You can't even make the right decisions in life without following the Lord Jesus Christ in the way He wants us to. I come to tell you when we're trudging all uphill, when the debt that we have is greater than the money that we have coming in, when the kids are giving us all kind of uh, just trouble and, and, and the storm is so strong, when you don't want to smile and life is so tough, can I say this, Christian? Just rest. Just rest in Him. Find you a place and get along with Him. Get yourself back in the Word of God and let, and, and let Him pacify your soul and your heart and get you through the storm that you're in. Do not quit. Too often I see Christians that have quit on life. They've got angry with the Lord because of the storm they're in and they don't see the end of the storm or they can't feel like they're going to get through the end of the storm. No child of God has a right to give up in the storm. God said in Psalms 46 and verse 1, He is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. That's the Lord God Himself talking right there that said, Hey, I've got it under control. Amen. I'm there. Even Jesus in John chapter 16 and verse 33, He says there in the last part of that verse, In the world you shall have tribulation, but of good cheer, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. God can and He will circumstance, take these circumstances and circumvent them. He wants to do that for us. Amen. I say, are we anchored? There in verse 27 and 28, it says, but when the 14th night was come. See, we think it was just a quick passing storm, don't we, as we read that? We can't understand being in a ship for 14 days and night and being in a hurricane or a typhoon. I can, remember, I can remember when Hurricane Camille hit the Mississippi Gulf Coast. They were 100-foot tugboats. They were sitting all the way across Highway 90. I believe there's an 80, there's a 60 or 80 foot tugboat that they actually, it sat on a guy's piece of property and he gave them a few bucks for it and they made it into a souvenir shop. That's how strong the storms can be in life. In this ship, it was 14 days of it. And it says, as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country. 
And they sounded and they found it 20 fathoms. And that's about 20 arms length. It's not like we talk today. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it 15 fathoms. And fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. Man, they just wanted to see the end of the storm. They wanted to plant themselves on their feet on dry ground. But in effort here to stabilize this ship, they threw four anchors out. Can I remind you of what an anchor does? I think most of us know knows what an anchor does. But an anchor is thrown out, and, and, and that anchor grabs a hold of that foundation on the bottom of the sea. And, and there's times when that foundation, just like it, I was talking about those ships on the, on the crab show and everything, uh, when that storm comes in, they get to a barrier island somewhere or something that breaks it a little bit, and they make sure those anchors are anchored in to that foundation in the bottom of the sea so they don't be pushed away from where they're anchored at. But evidently, the foundation of this sea wasn't the foundation that an anchor would hold on to. If the foundation's weak, it will not be secure. It does no good. It says that they cast their anchors and their anchors went down. Can I say this to you? The Apostle Paul was sitting there and he gives them great cheer because the angel of God had shown up and spoke to him the night before and told him everything was going to be okay. Can I say this to each and every one of us today? I don't care where you're at in the storm. If it's just starting, if you're in the middle, if you're getting toward the end, hey, just rest because the anchor holds. The anchor holds Amen. if you're anchored in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the foundation. See, their anchors went down, but Paul cast his anchor up, and it went up to the solid rock, who is Christ Jesus. As Christians, our anchors do not go down, because if the anchor went down, it would just drag us deeper and deeper and deeper. Our anchor goes up because our foundation is in Jesus Christ who is up. Yes. Who's got a hold of the rope. Who carries us through whatever storm there may be. Hebrews, Paul wrote in chapter 6 and verse 18, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. We know God doesn't lie. I was reading this past week where one of those, um, I don't know if you watch CNN or all those other crazy uh, things, but I don't even hardly watch the news anymore. I get up in the morning time and, and I turn on the local news to see how many people got killed and what the weather's like. See what's going on locally. But where one of these commentators, one of these news people said that the Lord Jesus Christ didn't live a sinless life while he was on this earth. I'm going to tell you, that man can talk all about Jesus he wants to, but if he believes that, he doesn't know Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. He doesn't know the Jesus That's right. that I know. But he says there, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. My hope is in heaven. My hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. I certainly hope yours is today too. Which hope we have is an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which entereth into that within the veil. The Lord Jesus Christ is the anchor. The Lord Jesus Christ has a hold of the rope. God had assurance. I mean, Paul had assurance God would deliver them. As I said earlier there in verse 22, it says, And now I exhort you to be a good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. What he said there, no one on this ship's going to die. The ship's going to be torn up, but no one's going to die. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Who's that angel of God? It says, of who I am. And who I serve, the Lord Jesus Christ, speaking to him. 
God wants us to trust him in the midst of adversity. God wants us to trust him no matter how strong the storm is. But you know, one of our biggest problems, Paul remained, I believe without a doubt in my mind, that Paul remained calm during this time. I believe because he was faithful and was fearless in the midst of that storm. And you know something, he was like that in the midst of a lot of people that were fearful and were scared. But he stayed strong. And that's because he had a hold of the rope and knew who had a hold of the other end of it. Our biggest problem, I believe, of remaining faithful and fearless is that we don't listen to the Lord God Himself. I thought about this as I put this together. You know, preach gets up here and preaches his heart out. And many of us will sit here and we'll just listen, we listen, we listen. Some of us try to stay awake. Some of us just, we listen and we never take anything that's said and put it to work in our life. And you hear, here have the apostle that's telling them, everything's okay. See, in the beginning of the voyage, when it said that it was a wrong time to go, there in verse 11, it says, Nevertheless, the centurion, the one that was over uh, Paul and, and the other prisoners, uh, it said that he believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. Hey, listen, uh, God didn't call a preacher to get up here and just give you a commentary every Sunday or, or, or every Wednesday night or, or, or Caleb to get up here and preach to you. What he, he gave it for edifying of the body of Christ, for us to grow, for us to learn how to, uh, to t stay steadfast in Him. How to live our life each and every day. We, we come here to, to, to grow in our faith. We come in here to, to listen to the Word of God taught and preached so we can get through the storms of life. Amen. But so often, it's just the opposite. See, the centurion here, the people on the ship, they didn't believe the instruction from God's man. And I believe that even with King Agrippa there, he was almost persuaded, he said. Almost persuaded. Did not have the Bible back then. Paul was the one that was carrying the Word of God. We have the Word of God today, but we do not follow it. And then we wonder how come adversary, we wonder how come the storms come into our life. And I say this, storms come into our life usually because of the way that the, the, the navigation that we've taken in our life. And it's not been the, actually the direction that God wants us to go. You can never live the life that Christ, that the Lord God of heaven wants us to live if we're not navigating with a navigator of life. When we start doing things on our own, when we don't stop and, and ask Him for direction, and listen, I, I, these fingers, if I point at you, they're more pointing back at me than there is you because there's been too many times in my life when the navigator hasn't been the navigator and Buddy Morrow's been the navigator. And usually when I find out when the storm comes, boy, even when I ask why, I usually I don't have to ask why, I know why, because it's been my decision and not His decision. And then you crawl back in the Word of God instead of, instead of saying, Dear Lord, I've got to make this decision today. Would you please help me make this decision? You begin to pray and say, Dear God, which way should I go? Then you start finding that quiet time with the Lord. Then you begin to get back in His Word and you begin to search for those answers that you're looking for. And usually when you find them, you'll find out that this was what you wanted and that's what you got. This is what I wanted for you. And can I say this? He always wants the best for us. You know, I thought about this too. Advers advers adversity sometimes is used to mold and to mature us in our walk with Him. David the psalmist wrote in chapter 34, verse 19, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. You know, God designed adversity regardless of the source but he I believe he designed it to be sometimes a turning point in our life sometimes he brings the storm in to get us to mold us to where he wants us to be That's right. 
I remember selling the ch last chicken store. I remember taking a job, getting paid once a month. And I got paid that first month, and by the third, I was broke because I didn't know how to control my money. I remember how I, I, I was unable to go places because we didn't have money to go places. I can remember the best times was having our kids and doing uh, picnics and things like that. I, I can remember going to Pizza Hut and getting the $5 pizza or, or Little Caesars and getting the $5 pizza for a night out. And you know something? I thought I was in a true storm at the time. But you know what the Lord God during that did during that time? Was He prepared me for the ministry that He was sending me to. Didn't make a whole lot of money. Stayed busy all the time. But He prepared me. And He showed me during that time that He takes care of us regardless. As long as we're following the navigation and the trail that He set for us. He allows adversity sometimes to accomplish His purpose. He won't allow us to stay one second longer than necessary when He brings it on to do that. God put a limit on that adversity because you are His child if you know Him as your personal Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit lives within us. I remind us of that. And the psalmist once again wrote in chapter 103, verse 13, Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, but remembereth that we are dust. Sometimes it's through adversity that God is molding us into the effective servant that he wants us to be. Paul knew who held the other end of his anchor. Do you know who holds your anchor this morning? I promise you this, if Jesus is holding the other end, He will bring you through it because He never, ever lets go. So when the wind blows, I'm anchored. My soul is anchored. When the lightning flashes, I'm anchored. My soul is anchored. When the trouble comes in that I can't see through, my soul is anchored. When the rain falls, when the storm and the winds blow, my anchor is the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe they were shipwrecked, but they were saved. The ship was torn apart. Somebody, some sinner here today is shipwrecked. But God wants to save you. If you go back to that Acts, and there in chapter 27, verse 42, it said, The soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners. So after the ship has finally come to a halt, they can finally see their way, even though it's battered, even though it's torn apart. Those guards, what did they want to do with all the prisoners? They said, let's just kill them. See, there was a group of men that were on that ship that heard Paul get up and talk about the God of heaven telling him that all lives would be saved. The boat wouldn't be, but all lives would be saved. I believe without a doubt in my mind, as Paul stood there with those men, just as he did with King Agrippa, I believe without a doubt in my mind that he witnessed to them about the Lord Jesus Christ. And they heard the gospel. And they heard what it needed to, what needed to be for them to be saved. These that were carrying Paul to trial. And they were carrying him to a trial because of his stand for the Lord Jesus Christ said, kill the prisoners. They'd heard it. There's people that sit here today. There's people out there on Facebook that listen to the message and sometimes sit in church or listen to a message time after time after time and never accept Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. They still did not believe on Christ. 
Many who go through storms and don't understand how they got through it, they think that the Lord protects them. They think that they're His child. But can I say this to each and every one of us today? I got saved when I was just before I turned 30 years old. Up until that point, you couldn't convince me I wasn't saved, but I wasn't. My life didn't prove that I was saved. The way I lived, all you had to do was look at it and you knew that I was lost, even though I would say, oh yes, I accepted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. But I look back over my life and there were times in my life when I should have died. But for some reason, Jesus saw fit that I last until I was almost 30 years old. There's some sit today, there's some that listen today. And Jesus has protected you. But if you were to die this moment, heaven wouldn't be your home. I never knew that the Lord would use me in the ministry. I never knew that the Lord would call me to, uh, to run a children's home or run a seed, uh, seed of mission or to preach the word of God. But that was his plan in my life. We don't know his plan in our life most of the time. Maybe for a season. So today, I just challenge you, if you're not certain about where you'd spend eternity, that before you walk away from here, that you get saved. See, everyone's life was saved that day, but some would still die and go to hell. But I believe something happened there in verse 43 of that centurion with Judas. It says, but the centurion willing to save Paul, I believe he got saved that day. I brought it on that trip. I believe his life changed around. Christian, today you may be dismayed in whatever the storm is in your life, but God will take care of you. God will take you through it. And I don't care who we are, we're going to have storms in our life. We're going to have adversity in our life. And I don't care how hard the storm gets. I don't care whether I can't see the road in front of me driving. I know that I'm anchored because Christ died for me. I know that I'm anchored because I have faithfully chosen to believe that he laid his life down on the cross of Calvary that day for some sorry sinner like me. That he rose again on the third day and that he's coming back again. And you know something? That time is shorter and shorter. I'm anchored because he got up one Sunday and he rose from the dead. And I've thought about this too as I close. Sometimes I get my eyes off the navigator. You know, and now in the newer jets and planes and things like that and everything, there's, we have all this great electronic stuff that, man, the planes can fly themselves. You can put in your route and it will take you wherever you want to go. Matter of fact, they can actually land planes now without a pilot. They can take off the little ones. I'm talking about jet airliners can actually be landed without a pilot or take off without a pilot this day and time. They're not using the technology yet but it's still being tested. But back in the wars, in the older wars, most planes, especially those big bombers, had a navigator. And that navigator kept them on the right path. That navigator picked up the target and, and the bombs that needed to be successful were dropped because of a navigator. We can miss a lot of those bombs we're following our navigator that come in our life, those storms. But so often in our life, we want to choose. We want to pick the days, the hours, the minutes, the time that we allow him to be the navigator of our life. And Christian, I promise you this right here. I'm anchored because he did die on the cross for me, just as he did for you. And all power is in his hands. Right. I ask this today as I close. 
are you anchored in the Lord Jesus Christ? If today was your last day here on earth, do you know that heaven would be your home? Don't go out of here doubting that. I know that for sure, for sure as I'm standing here. If for sure as I'm going to die one day, because he said our time on earth is numbered, I know that my home is in heaven. Do you? And Christian, I ask this of you today. How are you doing in being anchored in the Lord Jesus Christ? How are you doing in following the navigator, our Lord Jesus Christ, in your life? When those storms come, and they're going to come, and maybe today you're in the midst of a storm, and you need somebody just to wrap their arms around you and assure you that he's in control, to pray with you today. We're fixing to have a time of invitation. Maybe there's some today that you need to lay down at the feet of the cross and let go of it in your life so you can be the one Christ wants you to be. See, each and every one of us sitting here, we're not always the one Christ wants us to be. I know that I'm not. I wish that y'all would think that I was that way, and some of you may think that way. But I fight the storms just as hard as you do. And sometimes I get through them better when I'm all about Him and not all about me. Maybe today you're too much about yourself and you need to get Him and make, him, make your life all about Him. Father in heaven, as we stand, may we just give you our lives in a way that you want them. Lord, would we just fall in love with you about the song said and make you everything. And make all about you instead of ourselves. And Father, this morning I pray for those that are going through the storm right now. Lord, I pray that you'd help them get through the storm. I pray that you'd draw each and every one of us closer to you. And Father, we would allow you to be that lamp unto our feet. And you'd take us down the path that you want us to go. Instead of us sometimes in our lives taking the path that we want to go to. And Father, this morning I pray for those that may not be saved. I pray for those that aren't sure, they're not settled on where eternity would be for them if they were to die today. Oh, Holy Spirit of God, would you just help them to finally come to grips of what's real in their life. And Lord Jesus, this morning you've given us great, great commandments. And Father, this morning, I know that I'm not always the mouthpiece that you want me to be, and I beg your forgiveness for that. But would you help each and every one of us in here be as the Apostle Paul, and be the testimony, the voice that you've not called us to be, but commanded us to be. And Father, would you use us? And Lord, would you have your way and your will during this time of invitation as we ask it in your precious and loving name, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen.